over the next few videos. We're going to be looking at the accounting cycle. I'm actually separating the accounting cycle into seven different videos uh, to actually demonstrate the seven different parts of the accounting cycle, starting with this presentation, which is going to cover journal entries. And to begin, I thought we would actually look at an illustrative diagram of the accounting cycle, and I, I scoured Google for a really good image, but they all look kind of textbookish, uh, really dated, really old. So I decided to actually use some of my Photoshop abilities to actually come up with an Ingenote exclusive diagram, which is uh, what I came up with here. And of course this cycle is round because it is a circular cycle. And this, we're going to be starting off with this first step of the accounting cycle, which is this presentation, which is analyzing and journalizing transactions. So that's what we're going to be covering in this presentation. And the cycle is going to start off with this uh, this part of the accounting cycle and it's going to move clockwise around the cycle ending at closing entries and of course green means start because that is our first part of the accounting cycle and it goes around the circle and eventually stops at the red arrow which implies that we're going to be stopping at that arrow. So uh, I thought we would just use this accounting cycle as reference to look at while we go through all the parts in each of the videos. So I'll probably bring this up and refer back to it as we go on throughout the video series. So let's actually start by analyzing and journalizing a transaction. Or actually, uh, we're going to be looking at what we should be doing in order to journalize a transaction. So the first thing we want to actually be doing is we want to analyze the situation. So uh, let me think of a theoretical uh, situation. Say let's uh, maybe we have sales of a company. So let's say we're generating sales. What what is going to be going on within this situation? Well, since we're generating sales, most likely we're going to have revenue coming in because that is an inflow of assets. And uh, if we're if we're having a sale, we're probably going to receive either cash or a receivable because um, cash or receivables are the way in which we actually earn revenue. And now the second part is we're going to look at the accounts which are being affected. So let's pretend that this is actually going to be a sale on credit. So we're going to actually be having accounts receivable because we're going to be collecting money in the future or cash I should say in the future and we're actually going to also be generating sales revenue because accounts receivable is an asset and an inflow of an asset is called revenue. The third part is that are the account balances going up or are they going down? Well if we're actually if we're actually incurring uh, an asset we're gaining an asset so so the account balance of accounts receivable is going to be going up and since we're generating sales revenue, of course, the revenue account is going to be going up as well. And finally, we then journalize the transaction. So we need to think to ourselves, what do we do to uh, these, two, these two specific accounts when they are being increased? Well, accounts receivable is an asset. When we increase an asset, we're going to debit that account. And when we increase revenue, which is uh, technically an equity account, because it actually will increase retained earnings, uh, we're going to credit that account. And, and that is our, our debit and credit entry. I should just say debit equals accounts receivable, just so you know which one is being associated with the debit and the credit. So actually let's look over uh, a quick example, and let me just get rid of get rid of all this really quickly before we move on to uh, an example. So the first one is that let's say we are billed for advertising services. So uh, first thing is first we need to analyze the situation. What's going on? We're being billed for advertising services, so uh, we actually consumed advertising uh, services by a company that performed them for us. So since we actually used advertising services 
it's going to be known as advertising expense. Anything technically that we use is kind of known as an expense. So if we use advertising or we use advertising services, it's going to be an expense. If we use maybe um, some of our workers' time, that's going to be known as salaries expense and so on. So expenses is commonly associated with using a service. Uh, the next part is that since we're being billed for $300 of advertising expenses, we're going to actually have a payable being incurred, which is a liability, and we're going to have to pay the $300 at a later date. And the reason we use a payable is because it, say, it says that we're billed $300 and not that we're actually paying $300 at the moment. So you just got to pretty much watch the wording of uh, the, the sentence in which uh, you're, you're analyzing, or the transaction that you're analyzing. So what accounts are being affected? Uh, we know that, I kind of I kind of answered that in the first uh, part, advertising expense is being affected, and we are affecting an accounts payable account. The next part is, are the account balances going up? Or down. Well, since we're actually incurring an expense, our expenses are going up and our accounts payable liabilities are going up because we actually owe people money. And when we owe people more money, our account payable balance balances are going to be going up. The final part is journalizing. So we need to think what happens to these accounts. Uh, when they increase. So expenses, since they go up, it's natural to debit that account. And when accounts payable goes up, that's a liability account. Whenever liabilities increase, we're going to be crediting them. Okay, so we're not finished yet. We actually need to physically write the journal entry. And the way we do this is by First, writing the debit entry. So that's the first thing you want to do is write the debit entry. And we're going to say advertising expense for $300. And the second part is we're going to write the credit. And we're going to indent and write accounts payable. And we're also going to indent the $300. So the credit is going to be aligned on the right side, while the debit is going to be aligned on the left side. And the reason why we uh, don't indent the debit is because, think about debit. Debits are, are on the left side. If you think about the accounting equation, asset equals liability plus shareholders equity, uh, debits are a normal balance for assets and assets are on the left side so um, they're, they are left aligned debits naturally and credits are naturally right aligned because credits are on the right side so that is why we indent um, all of our credits and that is our, our journal entry for that transaction so hopefully you kind of get the idea of creating a journal entry and make sure to practice some of these and just watching um, very precisely what's going on within the transaction, what accounts are being affected, are they going up or down, and continue by journalizing that. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial when we talk about the, or when we're talking about posting these journal entries to the general ledger. See you guys then. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.